Good morning, guys. Welcome back or to the channel of today's video. As you can see here, we are in the white truck. So now I finally went and uh, found one of my old phones that I'm using for a speedometer here. So you can see, put the truck in reverse. thing now as you can see my speedometer hasn't even moved because that's how bad off it truly is but anyway i charged the battery up last night and um come out this morning fired right up i only charged it for two three hours last night and like i said come out here this morning it fired right up cranked a little slow but not too bad. So what I'm gonna do is pop the hood, hook up my amp again. I'm gonna take this guy for a drive around town here, and then when we get back, I might do some stuff to this. I don't know. Need to give it a wash, but it's kind of hot, so I don't know if I want to do that today or not. But like I said. I'm going to hook up my sub, my amp, uh, that way I can have that with this different battery. Uh, as far as the winch and everything else that I have under here, I'm not too worried about it. Um, don't worry about this. This is for the washer, the washer nozzles. Not worried about those, but I'm going to hook up my amp wiring, which is here. Let me hook this up to here on the uh, positive cable. And like I said, as far as a bunch of this other, other stuff, I'm not worried about that. So, I'm going to run in here, grab some tools, and uh, we'll do that. But we have in here the Hyundai which the one that I gave to my sister, if y'all remember that. Well, it blew up. If y'all missed that video, um, go check that out. But oh, we have stuff falling over already. But we have it in here um, trying to diagnose its issues. But they're going to come later, get their stuff out of here. But, sorry about that guys I just got a call about my car's extended warranty so I guess they're back to that again <laughs> vehicles they can fix through my extended warranty <laughs> uh, anyway I'm going to go out here get this all hooked up and we'll get going. Um, like I said, I don't know if I'm gonna get to wash it today. Okay, so uh, here's my old battery. I'm gonna try charging that up and see, see if it's any good or not. But I figured while we still have the 37s on the truck, I'm gonna do a little video for y'all. Um, concerning the 37s and that large lift setup that i have on that thing i mean as y'all do know we got some brand new furies hanging out here in the shop ready to go on that truck so without further ado i got a tape measure here let's let's measure a couple things uh first of which being let's measure to the bottom of the headlight because i know some states have uh, laws against being certain heights and whatever else. So if we take our tape measure here, come out four feet, boy, we get an idea. So you can see right there, maybe not. No, about 44 inches to the bottom of the headlight, almost four feet. 
um, to the mirror. Let me pull this tape out a little more. We'll do to the bottom of these stock mirrors. Go here, five feet. Now, if we come over here, let's see if I can do this one handed. So, to the rocker panel. What are we looking like? 27 almost. And then about four foot at the seat. So, just a couple measurements for y'all to kind of think about. And again, these are 37, 13 and a half uh, Interco M16s. So, the first issue, uh, for me at least, is this is eye level. I'm 6'2". This is eye level for me. Um, I do not have steps on this thing. So, 6'2", eye level, about the middle of the steering wheel. Getting in and out of this thing is not the easiest thing in the world. I'm gonna bring one in here. This is a little bit of breeze, um, but it's not the easiest thing in the world. It's not terrible, but again, not the easiest. So what I always do, I used to do the whole deal of put one foot in like so, which is my leg is straight out. <laughs> grab the steering wheel, grab the door and do one of the whole jump and hope you make it. But what I've learned to do, instead of putting stress on the steering wheel, um, which is, I'm a larger guy than most, what I normally do is I'll come up, open the door all the way, as you can see there, door's all the way open. I'll come up, I'll put my hand here, foot right there, and then push myself up on my right foot, knee on the seat, and then flop around and get situated. Probably not the best thing to do, but it works. And the only bad thing about that being is if you're in a parking space, there's a car next to you, you can't open the door all the way. So if you have to have your door like halfway open, that doesn't work. Uh, so if you're gonna, if you're looking at doing 37s uh, with this kind of lift, this is a 7.5 Fabtech with a leveling kit on stock tires. I measured this out to be about 10 and a half inches of lift over stock, again, with stock wheels and tires. Um, I measured it before I lifted it the first time and then measured it again on the fenders. And that's what we're looking like. So I know some people say, oh, it's just nine inches or whatever. The geometry of everything changes. I've heard a lot of people say the same thing with their trucks. But about 10 and a half inches lift over factory, over stock. Um, so with this lift set up with these wheels and tires, you might want to think about um, getting in and out and that kind of thing. Now, I'll go up here to town, Greenbrier, and I'll try to see if there's any ATMs or anything. I'll show you all that uh, again if I can find some. But let's get on the road here and see what we can find. All right, guys. So first point here, I'm kind of stopped right in the middle of this road, but it's fine. I promise you that. Um, a little sketchy driving this thing. It has been growing a while, so some of the wheel weights have fallen off. But here's a kind of one thing you need to think about if you're going to lift your truck. Put big wheels and tires, spacers, that kind of thing. These are 10 wide wheels with two inch adapters. And little roads around here. I mean, we got, what, maybe six, eight inches. Over here, on the other hand, we are on the line. So, I'm gonna hop out here and show you all this. We hit the good old emergency flashers. And also, I do wanna do a little shake test on these. So, see there, a couple inches, probably six, eight inches. 
and over here on the line. Now the front's a little wider than the rear, but you get the idea. So, like I said, this is not a very uh, populated road, so I am going to uh, do a little shake test on all these, make sure they're good. Because again, I haven't drove the truck in quite a while. And I want to make sure that everything feels good before we get out here I'm very far from the house. Okay, I'm out of breath a little bit, but there, a little shake and everything seems good. This thing, <laughs> forgot how much attention this thing gets. Had to, while I was doing that, had three cars pull in here just to look at the truck. So that's a, makes you feel good. But anyway, I'm gonna continue on with my little drive here. Okay guys, so uh, we're almost home. <laughs> but um, I filmed this whole thing in town long ago and forgot that my phone is hooked to my radio, so yeah, y'all couldn't hear anything that I said. <laughs> anyway, we're just about home. Um, you can actually see the Chrysler right there. When I'll get this thing parked, and uh, we'll go over everything that I said all ago. But um, well, let's just kind of start out here. First thing. Thing rubs, yes, it rubs. Going in and out of driveways, parking spots, our driveway, <laughs> and a lot of other times. Yes, yes, yeah, it rubs. <laughs> Especially when you're trying to turn a little bit, um, like going through our driveway or into a parking lot. Yes, it rubs. Um, I can remedy that by trimming, but I don't want to cut up my brand new fenders, uh, freshly painted fenders, and the factory fender flares, which are very expensive, that I've learned. So, I trimmed them a little bit, and um, that was kind of the furthest that went, but anyway. Uh, one thing to remember, that's why I carry this thing, the old phone. Well, actually you can see how old it is. There's an old picture of this thing before the move bumper. Still had the visions with the bald teragraphs and everything. That's an old picture. <laughs> um, but first point, that is why I carry that phone. Uh, when I drive this truck, the speedometer is very badly off. Uh, this speedometer, 25 miles an hour here is really like 36, 35, 36, somewhere in there. Um, 30 is like, I mean, it's 40, 42 or something like that. And then 40 is 65. So it's pretty, drastic jump there um and i can't hardly remember it all the time and around here we don't have like regular speed limits like everywhere else in the country we have 30 mile an hour most of everywhere um some places it goes from 30 and then to 35 but most places 30 and then we have here in the city we have 40 through the city then 45 um and then 55, and then 60 if you're going north. So that's why I carry this thing. And um, yeah, that's kind of kind of that pretty self-explanatory. But you can see here, we've trimmed it out, still rubs a little bit, not too terrible. If you hit a bump, it comes out, but otherwise not too too bad next thing will be pertaining to this particular tire you can see this tire here is a very knobby tire a lot of tread and a connecticut uh, the rears have a little less tread but 
these tires are very, very noisy. I mean, they're not terrible. Um, in my standards, but if you drove something like this, and then you drove this, yeah, it's, it's a whole lot different. <laughs> um, the M16s are definitely pretty loud. Um, but again, it's a mud tire. These are not just mud tires, these are I think considered more of like the extreme class of mud tire um, using every other lug is a bogger lug um, so I guess these are kind of like a hybrid tire but still they're not quiet uh, this thing shakes it bounces um, I've always had a looseness in my steering I don't know if it's the parts that I'm using or the steering box or whatever it is uh, I installed a Fabtech steering stabilizer up under there you can see it helped it a little bit uh, when I had the mud grabs the 37s but when I went to these it uh, progressively got worse um, considering coming from again mud grabs it's truck also needs alignment so that's also a thing the tires and wheels need rebalance but going down the road if you find a spot like we have around here a whole lot where the road has a bunch of dips in it it'll start having that little death wobble and the only way to stop the death wobble is to slow down to about 20. so uh, for instance y'all have seen me film on a road not very far from here and uh and this truck is real bouncy well that road in this truck is death wall <laughs> so that's another yeah it ain't fun but they, i mean the tires are loud it bounces it you feel every single lug uh, anything under like 25 you feel every single lug but i'm not complaining if you get something like this or something like this whole deal in general um you kind of have to expect that now 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 i used to have this truck on the 20 by 12 visions and um uh, trail grapplers i'm sure as y'all remember uh, if you've been following my instagram for a while but those that set up rode very well um, no bounces shakes death wobble none of that um not like this setup so again my opinion if you're going to run a setup like this you have to kind of expect it now um like i said truck knees in alignment you can see right there some of the wheel weights have fallen off uh, from the truck sitting. Yes, I know it's an issue. Um, they need balanced because now they're really, really out of balance. They were a little bit before, but with the truck sitting, they have weights have fallen off and now they're really out of balance. Uh, the other day when we drove it and got fuel in the, the last video, um, it was real bad uh, to the gas station and it got better on the way back. Um, this is, leads me to the next point. Tires like this, mud tires, um, aggressive tires, when they sit, you develop cold spots or flat spots, some people call them, in the actual tire. So that will be an extreme amount of unbalanced and it's going to shake vibrate everything else you're going to think your truck's falling apart but in all reality it's just cold spots or flat spots on the tires but that's to be completely honest that's really it um they're not too bad 
like I said, they do shake, they do bounce, uh, get a bit of death wobble every now and again. But this tire right here, look how good they look. You can see here a little better, the amount of tread that's on these things. But let's be honest here. Again, if you build something like this, that is this big and obnoxious and loud and all this stuff, you have to expect it. Uh, you gotta know when you have something like this, it's gonna do what those are known to do. Um, especially on this truck, it's a pretty light truck. If you had that set up on this truck, probably be a little different story. Uh, that truck's a lot heavier than the old white truck here, uh, even with the bumper and winch and all that stuff. But again, it's just kind of one of them things you have to expect it. You have to be ready for that type of thing. Um, and again, if you're used to something like the 300 here, we'll get into that here in a second. Uh, that's a little different. But if you're used to a stock car like this, and you immediately jump into something like this, you're probably not going to have a good time. This thing is quiet, it's nimble, and everything else. It stops good, it handles good. This truck, on the other hand, does not. Um, you know, in this car, if someone pulls out in front of you, or brake checks you, you're probably fine. In this truck, someone's probably about to get run over, um, and it's not going to be a good day. The brakes in this truck are absolutely horrible. That's something that I have um, come accustomed to, but if you hop out of something like this or a stock truck directly into something of the white truck's stature, just be prepared for a learning curve, uh, basically. So that's... I mean, really, that's the biggest drawback for me uh, with driving this truck every day. You have, to be, you have to be on your game all the time. That's why when I go out in this truck, I don't generally film while I'm driving. Um, you know, like in this truck, I film videos with it going down the road where I can hold the camera off to the side over here and I'm focused on the road doing what I'm doing, and that's fine. But in this truck, does it really work that way? Um, this is a demanding, if you will. Whereas something like that, or the 300, not too bad. Um, whereas the white truck, all you are is the idiot who is pushing a pedal and suggesting where the steering wheel goes. Okay, sorry about that. Neighbor just went by and dump truck. But anyway, uh, in this truck, like I said, all you are pretty much is the idiot behind the wheel who presses the pedal and suggests where it goes. And that's, <laughs> that's really it. Um, you know, wide tires, they walk around. They're notorious for that. Um, on that style of the suspension, I've had wide tires on different stuff. Had them on the blue truck for a little while. And it walks around. That truck walks around anyway, going down the road, but not to this extent. I mean, again, this is not bad for what it is. It's not like it's super unsafe or whatever. But I guess what I'm trying to say here is if you've ever noticed people with stuff like this, don't drive them across country uh, like I would in this car, this truck, the blue truck, whatever. If you've ever noticed that, there's a reason for that. <laughs> I mean, again, it drives fantastic for what it is. Um, but it's not something that you would want to drive across country or whatever, you know. But again, I love the truck. Um, it's my baby. I don't plan to ever get rid of this truck. Uh, stuff like the 300. 
if somebody come around here had a fistful of money, well, I'm gonna send them out here with a title and a car. Um, there's really no attachment to this for me. Um, this truck, I'd probably sell this thing. Um, not as quick as I would something like this, but I'd probably get rid of the 6.0 as well. Um, but the white truck, the white truck's not going anywhere. I plan to keep it, modify it, and just keep going with the truck. Um, this is one of those things where the build will never truly be finished, but I like to get it somewhat finished for what I want it to be anyway. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's kind of the deal there. Um, and like I said, with the 6.0, so I'm looking at my nice custom tails. Um, I plan to do some of these for that sometime uh, here pretty soon. I got to repaint some stuff. That's why I plan to do everything with it. But anyway, my thing about this truck is not super practical for me. You know, if that was your only vehicle, you drove it every day, you know, more power to you. Um, but I have this, and then the leather and all this other stuff. This is super nice to drive. I get like 18, 19 miles a gallon in this thing. Um, whereas the white truck there, I get like seven on a good day. I haven't really measured it um, in a while. I haven't drove it enough. But when I used to have the mud grips, I got like seven miles to the gallon. And I'm gonna say with these, it's gonna be even worse. So not the most practical thing in the world, but you know, it is what it is. It's one of those things I love it for what it is. Um, first truck and all that stuff. This first diesel truck, that was my first four door car. Um, or car in general you know i had the red mustang and the hyundai and the other mustangs but i never really intended to keep the other cars uh the hyundai i knew when i bought the car it had a purpose uh, and that's one of my biggest things is every vehicle whether it's this the chrysler this truck the blue truck they all have their purpose to me. Um, you know, that's one of the biggest things my grandpa kind of gets mad about a lot. Why do you buy so many cars? You need to get rid of some of them. Yes, I know, but they all have a purpose. Um, you know, people ask, why do you need two trucks? Well, do you want to drive that every day? Probably not. Uh, that's that's one of my big things you know I like cars I'm a car guy not just a 10 gen guy or a 60 guy or a 300 guy or whatever I like everything um, Chevrolet is at the bottom of the list I don't really care for the Chevrolet's but I do like some of the new uh, GM trucks Chevrolets, the Denali's, High Countries, that kind of thing. But that's just me. You know, I like the big American cars. I like my trucks. Um, you know, that truck's lifted. This truck's leveled. The blue truck's leveled. Eventually, I'd like to do a lifted diesel. I'd like to do a lower truck. Just an open book, uh, if you will. But again that truck has its purpose um, it does exactly what i built it to do um, it looks good drives decent i mean it's not undrivable uh, some show trucks that you see running around um 
at shows and whatnot that people don't drive because they can't that's not that's not what i'm looking for um i'd like to build a purposeful vehicle that you can actually drive you can use it you can everything else um now that truck i wouldn't want to tow a car like i do the 60 here um because there's a lot going on with that truck now this video is probably going to go up on the 7th of july um pretty ahead on videos but i'm looking at doing some stuff to the white truck that hopefully i can look back on this video and see a bunch of improvement uh talking to a couple guys i mentioned this in the last video and i'm talking to a couple guys um with some metal fab needs for this truck specifically on the front uh, the rear end i can figure that out um but i have an idea for this thing um get rid of the five lug There's something a little more reliable and something a little bit easier to find parts for i'll say that um I'm sure y'all can figure out what that means uh, especially if you own one of these trucks <laughs> but anyway that's in the works again like i said in the last video i don't really want to announce it um until the two guys i'm talking to um can tell me whether or not that's something that they can do um i know if you find the right metal fabricator you can do whatever you want to do but i have two guys i'm talking to trying to see if they could do it before i order anything but when I tell you if this can be done, I know it can be done, but if we can make this happen, it's going to be a big, big thing, at least for me. Um, it's one of those, one of those deals that'll be a one of one and it'll be pretty hard for anybody to replicate it. Um, you know, it's one of those custom bits that again, one of one, my truck it's me you know all that but anyway guys i think that's gonna be all for today's video so all in all the 37s they have their pros they have their cons uh one thing i love about this truck and even the 60 is when you go down the road you feel like you own the road um you know it it commands I think it's a word for that. Um, attention. It draws attention from everybody. So if that's not your thing, then that's probably not the right thing for you to be doing, is building large vehicles. But it does get a lot of attention. It's, I mean, I like that. Uh, that's not what I built the truck for, but it's kind of nice to see what other people think about your creation. Um, truck looks good. I like it. Um, but I have been looking to get rid of those wheels and tires to go wider and a little shorter, um, bump back down to 35s, go to a 12 or 14 wide, uh, probably stay with the six lug adapters for now. Um, kind of goes back to the little metal fab thing I was talking about, but <laughs> anyway, um, now, some of the cons, again, it, it shakes, it rattles, brakes are horrible, all of that. It wanders around on the road and everything else. But, again, that's something, if you're going to build something like this, you have to expect it. You have to be ready for it. It just is what it is. But, anyway, guys, I think that's going to be all for today's video. So, if you guys enjoyed today's video or find it helpful um, or you're looking forward to the white truck build to continue on here i know i took a break from it for a little while um to be honest with you i've been pretty stressed out about that whole deal for a while but the other day when me and my grandpa talked um we're sitting down he's asking you know kind of what i want to do with it and we got on the subject of 
the whole custom metal fab thing that I've been talking about. Um, I've been thinking about doing this for a while. I just haven't, I just didn't know where to start, basically. So we got talking about that and he gave me a couple really good ideas. Um, it's kind of one of the things that sucks about not having friends, but <laughs> uh, anyway, he gave me a couple ideas. We were talking about it, bouncing ideas back and forth and everything else. And I'm excited to get back to the truck. So fresh mind, fresh ideas, all of that kind of thing. Got a little break from it, but now I'm ready con to continue. Um, actually about to order a couple things for the truck that it needs reliable for uh, reliability wise I need to order a rear main seal a transmission pump seal the front seal on the transmission and the rear seal on the transmission I'm gonna order a, a pan gasket and a transmission filter do a service on the transmission because it hasn't been serviced since it was new when I put it in a couple years ago uh, it doesn't have very many miles so I want to go ahead and service that, fix our leaks and everything else. And then let's get to some mods on the thing. Like I said, I am trying to get rid of those wheels and tires. So if you're interested in those, uh, hit me up on Instagram. All of that will be down below. A lot, of, a lot of stuff planned. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. And again, like I said in the last video, if there's any companies y'all would like to see partner up on this build, uh, drop a comment down below, tag them, um, or shoot me a message on Instagram, anything. Let me know. I'm open to ideas on the truck. And honestly, I'm ready to get the truck back up and going. And if I can find some potential sponsors and partners and whatnot, that would be amazing. Um, the whole sponsorship thing is a touchy subject amongst most people, but if I can find companies to work with me on this truck, um, and maybe be able to help you guys out with some discount codes and whatnot, I would be more than happy to do so. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch y'all on the next one.